hardest part of medicine is the ability to store information in your long-term memory. It is so frustrating spending hours and hours learning the work to have forgotten it all in the next few weeks. If you're new here, my name's Amelia and I am a second year medical student. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how forgetting is holding you back. I really, really struggled in my first year at medical school. I was failing all of my exams and do you know what my secret was? I was studying completely wrong. Forgetting is such a normal part of learning, but in this video, I'm gonna be talking about some of the things that I implemented into my study routine to allow me to retain more information and essentially pass my exams in the long run. So with that being said, let's get into the video. So my first tip is memory with meaning is memory remembered. So let's just talk a little bit about the science behind memory. So you have your short term memory and you have your long term memory. And ultimately, you want to encode the stuff in your short term into your long term. So you remember it for much longer. That is the goal. And that is the aim of this whole learning business. In order to move something from your short term memory to your long term memory, it has to be encoded into your long term memory. There are different ways of encoding, but by far the most effective one is semantic encoding. Semantic encoding is basically conceptualizing things and elaborating on the meaning. So essentially, you need to be able to understand the concept before you can put it into your long term memory. It is far better to understand a concept rather than memorizing because if you memorize it, you are much more likely to forget. And this is backed up by science. Also, if you understand a process, if you forget a small part of it, you are much more likely going to be able to work it out, work out the bit that you're forgetting. However, if you just purely memorise something, you're not going to have an understanding. And if you've not got the understanding, you're not going to be able to work out the bit that you've forgotten. So any learning that you do, it is much more important to prioritise the understanding of the concept rather than the memorising to give you a good foundation to store it into your long term memory. My second tip is the use of active recall and spaced repetition. So active recall is the ability to remember information based on a very vague prompt. For example, a flashcard with a word on it or just the name of a topic and remembering a process from that. Space repetition is recalling information at regular intervals to allow your brain to process it, encode it and ultimately store it in your long term. So we've gone through the short term and the long term memory. We've gone through the encoding into your long memory, but we've not gone through encoding is much more likely with more exposure to a topic. And therefore you are going to be able to remember it for a much longer period of time due to the fact that your long-term memory has a much larger storage space. Anki is a really, really good resource to use the use of active recall and space repetition. Can I just say this is not an ad and nothing I mentioned in this video is an advertisement. I'm literally just letting you know that it is a very good resource to use. So if you don't know what Anki is, it basically shows you flashcards using an algorithm, shows you them at regular intervals. The more you get incorrect, the more frequently it'll show you. So that is what Anki is. It's a great resource to use and a lot of medical students use Anki as a revision tool. However, one thing that is very important to remember is that nobody's the same, everybody studies differently, and what works for somebody else might not work for you, vice versa. So it's really important to experiment, experiment with space repetition and use whatever feels like it's going to work the best for you. You don't have to use Anki, you don't have to use flashcards. There are so many different ways you can do space repetition. For example, blurting, writing everything you know about a subject onto a board, then looking at your notes and looking at what you've missed out. That is also a form of active recall. If you do that multiple times at regular intervals, that is your space repetition. I've also known people to have a Word document with questions and answers and they cover up their answers and they use their um, active recall in a similar way to Anki just without the use of the flashcard. So there's so many different ways you could do active recall. There's so many different ways you can do space repetition. It's not about what you use or how you do your active recall or space repetition. It's just about using those techniques to move concepts from your short term to your long term. That is it. So the next tip is to do with your lecture techniques. Lectures can take hours and they can also be such a passive way of learning. Just sat there watching and listening somebody talk at you can be so passive and so inefficient. So it is really important to have an effective and efficient way of doing lectures. This is something that you really need to nail down. However, 
It is also something that takes time to figure out how the best way to do lectures is for you. It took me about six months to learn how to best do lectures and how to get the most out of the time that I was spending on them. So it's not a skill that comes overnight. It might do for you, which is great, but it also might take a while, which is absolutely fine as well. But it's just important to try different things, different techniques to be able to figure out what works best for you and what's going to allow you to get the most out of the time you are spending on the lectures that you're doing. I actually have a video of how I do lectures on my channel, something to take a look at. I basically go through how I do lectures in a way that allows me to have done three active recalls by the time I have finished that lecture, doing the lecture in the most effective and efficient way that is possible for me. This process really helped me with my learning and since I started doing this lecture technique, I have not failed any of my exams and to put it into perspective, I failed literally every single exam leading up to doing this lecture technique. So definitely worth a watch. But just one final thing on lectures is your learning style is something that is constantly going to be evolving. How how you learn at the start of your degree may not be the same as how you learn at the end of your degree and that is completely fine. What matters is that you're being efficient and effective. So now you have really nailed your learning and your storing of information, it is now time to apply the concepts. So tip number four is past paper questions. Knowing knowledge is so different to applying knowledge and medical schools are actually testing the application of knowledge. As a clinician, it is all well and good being able to recite a process but if you're unable to apply it to a patient then there's no use knowing it in the first place. The good news is exam technique is something that you can 100% learn. Med school exams are so so different to any other exams out there. Like when I started med school I was literally like what is even going on but it is also something that through practice and repetition it's definitely a skill that you can work on and you can build on and get better at so it's not something to worry about at all it's just something that you need to practice once again not an ad but past med is a really popular exam practice tool it's got a bank of questions on there that you can literally just go through topic by topic and practice these skills so definitely even if you don't use past med make sure you're using some form of question bank where you can just practice applying these skills because exam technique is a skill in itself. Another really important thing to remember is that all medical schools are slightly unique in the way that they answer questions. So if you've got any past paper questions from mocks at your medical school or end of block marks or formatives, make sure you use them because they will really help you in the long run. Just getting used to the wording of how your medical school words things is sometimes half the battle. So do not pass them by either and make sure you just practice, practice, practice because it is 100% a skill that can be learned. So yeah, I think that is it. I think that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed and I hope it's been helpful. I really hope it has been helpful. If it has been helpful, I would really love it if you would like and comment down below and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much again for watching and I guess I'll see you in the next one.